So I absolutely believe, and again, simply my hypothesis, he is innocent until proven guilty that he will be um, arrested and well, indicted on sex trafficking charges. I have no doubt um, about that. And I do believe that he was most likely the kingpin um, of this. These girls, what that tells me, if it's out of the Southern District of New York, is this is spanning multiple states um, and that he is trafficking or allegedly trafficking girls um, across multiple states across the United States. This isn't just an isolated incident um, in one location. And so I have heard um, things as well about his Hamptons parties and things happening in those Hamptons parties as well. So I suspect um, more evidence may come out as a result of that. But these are extremely serious uh, charges. And part of me to is frustrated um, by somewhat the complacency, right, of the entertainment industry as a whole um, in this. Uh, and I think sometimes people fly under the radar for a long time, like Epstein did as well, um, because people are scared. Uh, people want to still climb the ranks and we're doing it all the while sort of sacrificing the safety of these, these young victims or girls that are involved in this. And that is deeply troubling. The sex trafficking allegations against Diddy are stacking up, and it looks like this time around he's not going to be able to figure his way out. At least, that's what the experts I'm seem to think. To people that feel like you went to LA too soon and Diddy put him in that situation. I think that was the dumbest shit ever. I think Diddy did it on purpose. And me knowing Puff, me knowing Puff, I know he did it on purpose. I, I think uh, I think Puff sacrificed the man. I know it sounds far-fetched. I was one of the people that didn't believe he did it to Kim. So I get it, you know, but when I look at that situation, it's like, it don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. Nothing else makes sense. Like why? Like you're not cut like that. You a bitch, we all know you're a bitch. Those who really know you know, you don't want no real drama. You doing that shit. He act like that now because the world's soft. You know what I'm saying? It ain't the shit nice. It ain't the gangsters out here no more. It's the you controlled environments and slapping around little rods and shit like that. But. Big Meech ain't out. You see, you see what he did? Big Meech kill your best friend, you get him a deal. Like, he's a bitch. And then a pus illegal cat or cats are out of the bag, people from the industry are stepping up and exposing how he's exploited his friends, partners, and employees over the years, using his power to keep on getting away with everything. They're selling our people short, man. Get this, wear this, have this, drive this. That's not what a... a, 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 a a 10 to 14 year old child in the hood needs to hear that this is what's important because it's not what's important that's what you get when you work hard go get your dream follow your dream and you'll get that when you're ready for that i will have respect for my father he, he told me to my face like you know his voice rapper dmx amongst other people has also exposed diddy's power trips with young children entering the music industry and how he would try to play the role of their mentor just to abuse them down the line I only met him once. Uh, well, you know, the locks got signed by that. Even though I bought the locks to our brothers, you know, they got signed. They were a safer group. You know, Puff signed them. And it was a blessing and a curse because you know, they were sure they were happy about getting signed first and they were on the Benjamins and shit was going. But then he made them jiggy and put them in suits and and made them, made them write lyrics for him and took all their publishing and raped them. Wow. I'm like, damn. I'm glad I didn't, you know, like, you keep that. The only thing I respect is my pop. He, he, he told me to my face. How did you feel when, when Pop passed and then you came to the scene? A lot of and people they compared, compared you. They compared you. I wasn't there when he died. No, no, no they compared you. Oh, uh, uh, How did you feel? I actually had a chance to see Pop. Oh, what? Walking. He was a cool dude. A big part of the problem was he didn't have he didn't have his crew. You don't go to Cali and live there right? uh, without like like that. DMX has been one of the few people in the music industry who have openly spoken out against Diddy and his alleged involvement in child molestation within the industry, along with Tupac's death. Now I'm Yay Kelly bitch. Now I'm Bill Cosby bitch. Now I'm Puff Daddy Rich. That's me, to me, Rich. You know, today you put out a hit. The day Diddy admits that he put the hit out, they got pop kill. Eh? Puffy almost caught it the messy when he smacked that bitch. I'ma bust the coach's head open on some Diddy shit. Oh. Daddy ain't no telling what I might do. You would have thought my favorite rapper was Puff. Back then I ain't no shit. Now I know. You put much. out a hit today. Did he admit that he put the hit out that killed? While Eminem hasn't released an official statement. A lot of the allegations against Diddy, people are now starting to notice. The fact that he called Diddy out for murdering Tupac in his song, Hill Shot. I got my MTV out. Savage! I'm a savage! Oh! I'm a savage! Whatever I 
what I'm going to get! Whatever I want, I have to get! But it wasn't just rappers and singers who were afraid of Diddy back in the day. Now, he also had politicians wrapped around his fingers because of the power that he held. I remember sitting up in one of the booths. You know how House of Blues is set up. I'm sitting in one, and this is the pre-Soul Train party, so I'm sitting up in one of the booths. I'm in there and just tension. It just felt weird. And I remember seeing Puff come through. That's where it started for me at. And Puff had like five bodyguards with him. And this was like one of the only times Puff ever stopped to speak to me. So, you know, I felt a little uneasy. Like, what's that about? Puff don't do that. To make a long story longer, Tracy Waples. She outside in a Benz like, Meth, come on, get in the car. I'm like, what the f***? I'm not making a connection here. And I'm like, oh, that's my car. Like, puffy car. There ain't no way I'm getting in that motherfucking car. No f way. Even though, you know, I ain't got no beef with Puff. Puffy the man, Sean, or whatever and shit. You get him one-on-one, -on -one, Puff is the coolest motherfucker on the planet. But Puff the Puffy P. Diddy, that's showtime. Showtime, baby. And I don't blame him because he got to live up to the persona, you know what I'm saying? And maybe that really is his persona. Like I said, he's, he wasn't the type of person go out his way to speak to you. In fact, it's a known secret in the entertainment industry. The once Diddy wanted something, he would stop for nothing to get it even if that resulted in murder. Who gonna turn down 50 million? Now I've had to turn down $50 million four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right, uh, cause P Diddy be wanting to body. And you gotta tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. Motherfuckers be gay in Hollywood, you never fucking expected. They be having these big ass mansion parties, and the mansion party, the whole mansion is a party, and then it's a separate party in the little rooms. I ain't been famous that goddamn long. I'm excited in a motherfucker to be at the mansion party. You be looking in all the goddamn rooms, and you fuck around and look in the wrong room. Nick, come here. Why you think I speak with such clarity? I'm actually involved in each one of these stories I told you about. Now his inappropriate behavior knew no bounds, and it's even been caught on camera a few times, giving the police all the evidence they need to keep him behind bars. It, all, it truly is about the Benjamin, yeah. as we see. Oh yes, he's he glittering. <laughs> it's it's really about the yeah. Well, now when we come back, we're gonna talk more with Puffy, and if you wanna hang out, more than welcome, stick around, my brother. Oh, all right, you. we'll be right back with more right after this. However, with all the proof that the FBI got against the rapper after the multiple lawsuits, witnesses, and all the evidence retrieved from his properties during the raid, the process for Diddy to finally get what he deserves is going to be tedious and long. Only one of those words people can attribute to his performance in bed. I'll let you figure out which one. This is, you expect after a week, they're going to take a lot of time. They've, they've got to go through every single line of every text, every email, make their interpretations, add that and see if it corroborates what their already cooperating witnesses are saying. They don't rush it. The minute they make an arrest, the speedy trial clock starts to tick. So they would mm -hmm. rather, knowing he's not going anywhere, he's extremely famous, he's not going to flee, take their time, build their case, and then the minute they make an arrest, they've got to be ready to go to trial. So they hand over a ton of evidence and they go, we're ready leaving me and Arthur, if hypothetically we were defending him, with a mountain of evidence, unable to go to trial within the, the, t the, the constraints given to us by a, by a judge. So they're gonna take their time, make sure they're ready to go. Hmm. You agree with that, Arthur? You're not, you don't think it's weird that they don't have a case just because they haven't arrested him yet? Yeah, I, that's basically what Mark said, is standard operating procedure. I mean, that's the difference between local prosecutors. It's like, you know, robbers and bank robbers and thieves and you know they kind of grab them and then they figure out the evidences with the feds they figure out what all the evidence is they keep an eye on where that person is and uh you know they don't make an arrest until i mean they have a 97 percent conviction rate or some crazy number like that because they don't put the handcuffs on someone until uh, they feel that there's no way they could win and there's a lot of stuff here to go through but boy they were so first of all those pictures that you show I know they handle things differently in New York. That's not typical when they uh, do a search warrant on someone of that. I represented Rudy Giuliani when they executed a search warrant on his apartment. They definitely did not do that in his apartment. Um, mm -hmm. Now, P. Diddy and Rudy Giuliani maybe shouldn't even be mentioned in the same sentence, but um, <laughs> you know, Rudy was treated and his apartment was treated, you know, very, very appropriately, very nicely. There was a lot of cooperation going on. Um, and there was no, I mean, they, these guys flew in 